Greetings all and welcome back to the Building Business Resilience Show. Gareth and Shane here again from Sanctuary Financial Planning, specializing in lifestyle financial planning for growth business owners and social media influencers. We're still in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and with all that's going on in the current climate, we thought we'd put together a series of videos that help business community around us. In today's video, we're going to be talking to Paul Smolinski. Paul is a networking guru and owner of IntroBiz, co-founded IntroBiz Expo with his wife, Tracy. IntroBiz is one of the UK's leading business networks established for over 11 years. They create and connect communities for global business opportunities by hosting over 80 business events and exhibitions across Wales, UK, Europe, and USA, connecting leading brands together online and offline. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hi, Paul. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Good to see you guys. Thank you for having me on your podcast today. Yeah, you, you're welcome. It's, uh, it's good to have you here. Um, so um, tell us where it all started, Paul. Okay, so um, so I'll tell you where it started with IntroBiz. Um, yeah, I um, met my, uh, my wife at a networking event, and uh, <laughs> it was, it was uh, nine years ago. I went to uh, um, Fomont Castle, which is at uh, a polo event, and um, I got introduced to uh, Trace, who was the um, was the founder of Intrabiz, and she she ran a business network, and uh, I never understood what what that was, and, uh, and my background was retail. I was an area manager running uh, stores around the country. When I got introduced to Trace, she said to me, um, "I run a business network, and." Uh, and I connect businesses and she, it was more of a lifestyle business for her uh, when she first set it up. How she set IntraBiz up, she, she was uh, working for the Western Mail as a, as a sales, um, sales executive. And uh, they told her one day, you need to go networking. And she went there uh, out uh, at various networking events and uh, she, she got it all wrong. For the first six months, she was trying to sell to people. And, uh, and she's asking people at these events, how come I'm not successful when everyone else is? And they said, Tracy, you're doing it, you're doing it all wrong. You're trying to sell um, advertising space to people. It's not about that. You've got to build relationships and build trust and, um, and get people to know and like you and trust you. So she, tr- she changed the um, track on the approach on uh, meeting clients. Uh, and then six months um, later, uh, she brought in just over a hundred thousand pounds worth of business just by getting to know people and building relationships. And the Western Mail was saying, "Wow, what you know, what a fantastic network you are." Um, that gave her the idea of uh, setting up her own business, and she came up with the idea of um, setting up IntroBiz, uh, where she uh, did uh, once a month events. It was more of a lifestyle business for her because she um, uh, she had two children. And she wanted to stay at home and uh, she wanted to have a lifestyle business where she could work once a month, putting events together. She built up a network that she had met people from uh, the Western Mail. And then, um, and then she started an intrapreneur and then uh, she's been doing it for about uh, two years, more, more of a lifestyle uh, income for her children. Her kids were, were young, go to school and that suited her down to the ground. And then obviously I met her at a, a polar event and um, she, she tried to uh, convince me to come into the business and I was having none of it. I said, no, 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 I don't understand networking. It's not my scene. And then, and then I had one um, uh, invitation with, with Trace to go to London to go and see um, Shannon Lecter, who was the co-founder of Rich Dad Poor Dad, one of the biggest um, books of, of all time. And also to go and see um, a guy called uh, Kevin Green, who's one of the, uh, the biggest uh, property landlords in the UK. And, uh, and that's where, you know, I went to this event in London with Trace, got hooked in with Sharon, resonated with Sharon, and went, wow, you know, Trace had been nagging me for two, you know, for like two years to try and come into the business. I was having none of it, and I didn't get it at all. And that was, that was one of the light bulb moments where I sat in the audience and went, wow, what this woman's been telling me for the last like hour and a half is what I've been doing for the last like 15, 20 years in my retail um, game where meeting people, connecting people, um, knew lots of people, built up a big network of business owners. And I thought, imagine if I brought them into Intrabus. And that was one of the, the um, life, light bulb moments where I said to Trace, right, let's give it a go. Let's see my contact. Let's bring him into the business and we'll give her a year. And, and that was it. You know, that moment, we, we never looked back and, um, 
And from there onwards, it just went, it just grew and grew and grew. So are you admitting now on, on a, a recording that you've had to turn around to Tracy and say, do you know what I love? I give it to you. Everything that you have said is absolutely correct. I bow my hat to you. Well done. <laughs> and I get, I speak on stage to sometimes four, five, six thousand people. And every single time I have to like share that moment saying, why don't you listen to your wife? <laughs> why, why don't you listen to what you're being told? And as most entrepreneurs are, is right, okay, um, do you take advice from your wife? And I had to like eat humble pie. And, I, and even now, the business has been going over 11 years now, I still have to eat humble pie when that conversation starts going because not many people want to admit to like saying, you know, what do you know about this and what do you know about that? And sometimes it was a bit like, you know, um, you know, Trace had set up a, a lifestyle business. I was an area manager for a company, um, um, you know, uh, taking millions for, for the business. And, um, and I was thinking, you know, you know, what does Trace know about networking and, and entrepreneurship? And there's me like, you know, taking millions thoughts, working with luxury brands, thinking, you know, what does Trace know? And, and, you know, and it was one of those, it was one of those decisions where that until you, it's explained to you and then you actually see it and then you resonate with those people, it, it was a light bulb moment. And, um, and, and, that, and that was something that, you know, it, it stuck with you for the rest of your life. So I think it's just being open-minded and, um, and, and think of a different strategy on how it's come across. And, um, and, that's, and that's where, um, and that's where, you know, we, uh, you know, it, it first took off really from, from me coming to the business, um, looking at strategies, uh, and then we had uh, we, we made sort of fundamental decisions um, in our business to, to sort of change. I have a question here now, and I'm not sure if it's going to be applicable to you or you need to grab Tracy because it might be for her. Um, they say your network is your, your net worth. So how important is building your network in business? I think, I think um, one of the three... One of the three questions we've always asked, um, you know, some even global entrepreneurs, you know, like Lord Sugar, Grant Cardone, Richard Branson, and and we've asked that question when we've interviewed them, and and they've all said the same thing. Richard Branson to, uh, told me about he builds circles, circles of, of, of trust with, with people, and it doesn't matter how small that circle is, um, he's managed to grow it, you know, globally. Uh, the same with Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone has built his network uh, on uh, social media and marketing and built his network with, with entrepreneurs. And, and also, you know, when we interviewed Lord Sugar at the show in 2018, um, he would never be where he is today if he, if he hadn't built his network of trust with, with individuals as yeah. well. And, and I think, you know, w w one thing that, um, you know, there was, there was a 10X conference this year um, uh, at, uh, in Vegas, um, with Grant Cardone and Grant um, named five of his, of his biggest influential, influential uh, keynote speakers that he's ever worked with and one of them was Sharon Lecter. She was the only female uh, global entrepreneur there who uh, he, he recognised that he learned so much from and, and we, were, we were fortunate to, um, to meet Sharon uh, and she was the one that changed my mindset. Um, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be standing. I'd still be probably in the retail game now, doing what I've always did, is being, um, you know, looking after retail fashion stores. I, I, I would still be there now today if I hadn't gone to that event. Okay. Strange. I presume the vast majority of your work has been face-to-face -face networking up until recently. So you guys have had to make a, a, a career-changing decision in terms of, there's no more face-to-face um, -face at the moment. So how important is the online networking events during these times? I think um, it's such a fundamental um, decision that we had to make because as soon as, um, as, soon as it, was, it was announced it was locked down, uh, prior to that, I never visualised that we would do an online event because we've always done face-to-face -face, you know, for over 11 years now. But we, we, we had been toying with it, the idea a couple of years ago about doing online events. But that decision when it was locked down, it was a transformation straight away for our business. 
you know, what, what, we, um, what we had to do is like, right, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to achieve this? And obviously, without Zoom, you know, that's one of the biggest, um, uh, you know, uh, platforms we could have used. And I'll, and, I'll give an, and I'll give an example. We tried to do online a couple of years ago, and it, it, was, it was a disaster event. It, was, um, it wasn't successful at all. And uh, we had bad internet in our, in our old house, and uh, it kept failing, and, you know, the signal wasn't good at all there. So it just put us off, that whole experience. And we thought, oh, here we go again. Is this going to be the same? Because we had a bad experience. But you sort of learn from failure. And when you learn from failure, how can we make it better? And obviously, you know, what Zoom does now, we don't have that issue anymore. But since we've changed our business model to um, what we used to do before, we used to do like three events a month with one keynote speaker. And we'd, we'd average between two, uh, two to 300 people at the events. And um, what we're getting now is that we've changed our model to uh, eight networking events a month, to eight keynote speakers, um, to meeting face to face online. And it's been a huge su success. We've had over some like 430 companies join us in the last um, you know, five weeks. Um, and it's been a massive uh, intake where what we're, what, we're, what we're getting now is we're getting attraction from around the world. So people are joining us from like uh, Scotland and Ireland and London. Um, and Europe and America, where normally you'd have to fly into the events face to face. Yeah. So that's been, you know, that's been the huge difference what we're getting now. Also, if we do go back to face to face events like next month or or, 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 or six months on the road, we'll still we'll still going to be doing online events because I think it's a huge opportunity to meet people face to face um, and 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 create new business opportunities um, by uh, online. The world of online makes the world a small, a smaller place, doesn't it? Hundred percent, hundred percent, and um, you can see why. Um, you know, so many people now are doing are doing um, uh, Zoom events, and also it's 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 more of a lifestyle. It's more lifestyle for yeah. people living, which is which is more beneficial, more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it like I, I think that's it. I think I think this will make some businesses pivot um, and hit markets they never did before. You know, because you, you 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 can hit any country now with intrabiz. You know, and yeah. people who historically would have thought, well, I, I wouldn't mind having a look at an event there, but that means I have to fly into London, get a train from London to Cardiff um, to go to an event. Where well, now they don't have to do that. They can they can jump in now from Australia, wherever it may be. So we got a guy tomorrow. Um, he works with Tony Robbins, one of the global speakers in the world, much Richard Branson. Les Brown, um, he mentors CEOs and sporting celebrities and, and business entrepreneurs. Um, is a seven hour difference in time. Yeah. But he's joined tomorrow at eight o'clock till 10 o'clock. And it's like face to face. People can meet him, speak to him, learn from him. He'll inspire people. He's a best selling author. It's just much easier now doing that. If I had to fly him over, it'd probably cost me 10,000 pounds. Yeah, exactly. With first class services and accommodation and all that so the logical side of it is like you know immense you know don't get me wrong you can never beat face to face and, and, no. and uh, see people in the face and, and learn them but, but seeing people and learning from people face to face online it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna revolutionary most people's businesses going forward now i think you know as a business entrepreneur the world yeah. becomes a smaller place, as we said. Um, you've made reference to both of them earlier on um, a few times, but you ha you hosted the largest um, exhibition in Wales a couple of years ago. Lord Sugar was there, uh, Grand Cardone. How or what was that like for for you and Tracy uh, putting that on? So, so one of the one of the strategies when I came into the business, um, I remember Trace spending a thousand pounds at an exhibition at Cardiff City, and. Um, you know, when we uh, we bought a stand there, we, we exhibited there, and I remember that day like, like yesterday. And um, you know, I said to Trace, "So what happens now?" He said, "Well, you know, not many people go to ex expos because no one does." I went right. She said, "The only people who do business at exhibitions is the exhibitors face to face." I went okay. So we waited all day long there, and it was right. Saw so about twenty people, thirty people. And most of them were the exhibitors who were there at the time. After the event, we packed away and, and I sat in the car, in the car park, and I turned to Trace. I said, right, we're going to do an expo in three months' time. She said, 
How are you going to do that? I said, I don't know, but I'm sure we can do a better job than this. And we did. We, we actually, uh, we had some like 60 exhibitors and, and 500 people at the uh, Rico Suite. Then the following year, we did, um, we did the, whole, the whole stadium, the two floors. We had 120 exhibitors and we had about 1,000 people. And then we went to House of Sport 1, House of Sport 2, House of Sport 3, and sold out to every single event. And then our goal and our dream was always to be to host an event at the Multipoint Arena and do the biggest event that Wales has ever seen, B2B. And that was always been a dream, it's always been a goal, it's always been like, you know, how are we going to achieve that? And I think, you know, prior to the Lord Sugar and Grant Cardone events, there was a, there was, they were always on my agenda further down the line. And I think we hosted it in 2016, in, um, in, where we um, did our first event at the Bottle Point, and it was a great success. And every year it just grew and grew and grew. And then we had the opportunity to bring uh, Lord Sugar, I've never been to Cardiff, we had the opportunity to bring Grant Cardone to come to Cardiff as well. And we had, you know, all the apprentice winners there. We had the CEO of WRU there. Um, we had an amazing lineup of people. And it, it was, it was, you know, it was pure, pure pressure because the nation, all eyes are on me of like, how are you going to pull this off? How are you going to get the, these guys here? How are you going to sell out? Um, and all the brands were there. The World Press was there. The BBC were there. Wales Align were there. BBC News filmed it live. It was on news. Um, but I always believed that we could do it. You know, the amazing, the amazing people we have in our network surround ourselves with fantastic brands. You know, the speakers that we had, we knew them all and, and they, we know they do a brilliant job. And, um, and we had the backing of the business community to support us. And I think without that backing that we built up like, you know, five or six years ago when we first started out, that's what brought the community and I remember that decision um, when I asked when I told Trace we're going to do uh, an expo and I, and I got advice from about five or six business leaders in the community and you know what they all said to me don't touch it with a barge pole don't touch it you, you, it'll, it'll fail it'll be a disaster no one goes to them and it was one of those decisions do I take the gamble or not and I took the gamble I said right I'm going to do it um, and, and since then, since, since we um, did the expo, um, we, um, you know, we uh, uh, geographically then went to the Dragons, then we went to Slackley, then we went to Carter City, uh, and now we're, we're, you know, we're expanding the, the, the expo you know, further afield now, not just in the UK, but across Europe as well now. So we, got, we just sold a franchise uh, this year in Sweden. So we're doing an expo in Sweden. Nice. But, uh, it, it was it, it was it was an amazing experience, and um, you know to interview Lord Sugar and and, um, and see the apprentice people there was like I remember sitting on the stage watching him, and he's exactly the same person that you see on the telly as the apprentice. Brilliant. If, if there's a lot of new people, new people going to um, a networking event, yours or others, what are the three key tips you could give them? I think. I think one of the, the key things, you know, for, um, for networking, I think, you know, where um, these, these are the key areas that you should, you should do is that when you go to a networking event, always remember it's always about other people and not you because you'll find a lot of people that go there and looking, what are you going to do for my business? What can you add value to and what can you offer me just solely for me? And networking is all about three things. It's all about helping, supporting people and, 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 giving, and giving back to people, right? Because it is a true saying, the more you help people, the more you'll get back. Okay. The second thing about, about networking is never judge a book by its cover. I've seen people turn up, turn up at events and turn back and say, there's no one in here I don't think is going to be suitable for me. And I've seen people do that. And I've been to an event where that's happened. And, uh, you know, and, and you never know who's in that audience and you never know who you're talking to. And, and also, you know, one of the tips, you never know who those people know to grow your business. And I think that the number one golden tip in networking that most people fail is the follow-up. It's a true saying over 85% of people 
fail to follow up on networking events because they, they're afraid of um, rejection, we're afraid of not connecting, they're, they're, they're afraid of, you know, um, you know, will these guys get on with me or can I help them? If you follow up people and say, how can I help you? Then you'll see the massive return, um, you know, when you go networking. And I think it's people's, it's people's perception that, um, you know, never be afraid, you know, be always, always open-minded, but also be there about helping people and serving people. Because if you do, the rewards are, uh, you know, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Really helpful uh, points there. Uh, cheers to that, Paul. Um, last thing, um, how can people find you um, and uh, find out more about you, Intrabiz, Tracy, and uh, your upcoming events and becoming members? So, so, um, we host events uh, twice a week now. So you can go to uh, www.intrabiz.co.uk and go to our events page. We have a list of um, all our upcoming events for um, uh, for this week and next week and upcoming event, events in, um, in, in uh, May and the uh, rest of the year. Also, we have our expos, which um, uh, Cardiff City, the Dragons and uh, Swansea Guild Hall this year and also in Sweden. Um, you know, you can, fo- you know, follow, follow up with us on LinkedIn, uh, follow me on LinkedIn and also uh, IntroBiz um, on uh, Twitter and Instagram and also on Facebook. Um, and, and we're there just to, you know, to help people. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're looking to meet someone or meet a certain client or a business, you know, we're here. We just, help, we just love helping people and, um, to, you know, to, to create opportunities for them to grow their businesses. And um, uh, don't be afraid to reach out to us and uh, we would love to help you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Before we go, Paul, I realise Tracy has a book out. As you said before, um, you always have to uh, listen to your good wife. I presume if you don't give it a plug, you could um, you could be in severe trouble. So, can you give us a, the, the name, or do you even have it to hand there? Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, the, the book it's called Master Networking. Okay. Uh, the book here, uh, how to build a business by talking to people, and uh, it's on uh, it's on Amazon. It's on our website. Um, have a look at it. Uh, it's been endorsed on the front cover by Sharon Lecter, co-founder of Rich Dad Poor Dad, and and Sharon helped us re- uh, write the book. Okay, and um, there were some brilliant tips on there uh, about networking. Um, so yeah, have a look at the book there. There's Mrs. Smo, and um, give it a big plug. And uh, and she tells you all, all the principles on the back as well about how to be the perfect networker as well. Pardon the pun, but you're in the good books now in the house tonight because you uh, plugged that. <laughs> She's actually on her second book now. She's writing her second book. Wow. So, so um, that's going to be out hopefully in the next um, four or five months. Perfect. So uh, she's writing that at the moment. So, yeah. Great news. That's good. Brilliant stuff. So that was a great show today with Paul. Uh, Paul's uh, very experienced in uh, in networking and his, his company's going from strength to strength at the moment, Intrabiz. Uh, there'll be more information about Intrabiz in the show notes below. Um, and uh, there'll be a link to Tracy's book, as uh, as he mentioned as well, and how you can buy that on Amazon. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. There's more videos to be published every week, so don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button, and you want to be notified of the next video. Right, see you in the next show.